Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Patty. Welcome back, Dr. Angela. And you know, in past videos, we've sort of on the periphery or just in a very cursory way sort of mentioned like, oh, these oils are not so great. Make sure to avoid them or be careful with this oil or this ingredient. So it can be a little bit confusing. Very so, confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's confusing for everybody, yeah. um, even people who know. So we wanted to go a little bit more in depth today to talk a little bit about unhealthy oils, healthy oils, good fats, bad fats, that sort of thing, um, and get a little bit more specific. And before we even talk more about what these industrialized or um, processed oils are, just you know, as a little example is canola oil. Mm -hmm. and. You know, a lot of people think of canola oil as actually being quite healthy and just a little bit of history, you know, get ready for <laughs> Grandma Patty to I've give got a you, story for you too. Give you a little history <laughs> lesson. So get comfy. Um, but no, just a little short snippet, which I thought was very interesting. Canola oil, which we think is very healthy, was actually developed in Canada in the 70s. Um, and it was made from the rapeseed plant. Uh, and they had to genetically modify it and process it to make it edible and have less what was called erucic acid, which was in the rapeseed plant. And so they did all these things to make it a food based oil. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, who wants to be eating an oil that has the word rape in it? I know, I just laugh every time you say it. It's terrible. I know. <laughs> so in order to make it more amenable and just pleasing, they the word canola comes from Canada and oil. So that's where we get canola oil. And now 90% of canola oil due to other politics and environmental issues that we won't get into in this video, 90% is genetically modified. This means really that intense. it impacts our health in a huge way. Um, so that's just a little bit of history to, you know, just even connected to canola oil to illustrate where did these oils even come from? We don't even think about that when we're eating our potato chips or sweet potato chips or, you know, hummus that we got from the deli or whatnot. So. Yeah, just how processed that mm -hmm. oil is and that it didn't really even start out as a food oil exactly, mm -hmm. just all these processes. Um, yeah, I have a memory of canola oil as a kid. So canola oil is used in baking quite often because there's very little flavor to canola oil and so in a lot of cakes and cookies and so I have this memory of you know like I'm Greek so everything was olive oil for the most part in our house except for sweets around the holidays mm -hmm. and so then there was this like bottle of like large clear plastic that was canola that lived under the sink that was you know for the holiday baking and so you know just like once a year and if it didn't get finished it was like the next year using that same bottle of oil it's already a polyunsaturated vegetable oil which we'll talk about but so mm -hmm. it, it's damaged really easily and then you know things sit in the pantry and so just the quality of it's being so terrible for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's canola oil. So as Dr. Angela was saying, a lot of there's more that it's more than just canola oil. And we'll yeah. we'll um, write not only write a list in the description box, but we'll go into a list of the good oils and the and the bad oils to avoid. But as Dr. Angela was saying, a lot of these oils are were made from agricultural waste, yes. right? Yes, and um, then made into food product. Mm -hmm. Or industrial waste. Mm -hmm. So so paints. Yeah, paints, varnishes. Mm -hmm. um, so these oils, or like cosmetic emollients, mm -hmm. things like that. So these oils had a different purpose. And then they realized, well, we can you know, repurpose it like yeah, this. We've got some byproduct. Let's you know make something out of it. We can actually um, consume it, sell it, that sort of thing. Yeah. So um, it's it's really something to consider. And uh, you know, Dr. Angel just mentioned PUFAs or polyunsaturated fatty acids mm -hmm. is what that stands for. So that's not good. Yeah. Because why? They're really. Um, they're oils that oxidize very easily. So it means they get damaged very easily. They're very fragile. So if they get exposed to light or high heat, um, and so, you know, most of these are sold in a clear plastic bottle. So, you know, there's definitely the processing um, of them to get them into the packaging and then how they're transported and on the shelf. So there's just a lot of potential for damage to happen to these oils be 
before they even get into our bodies. Um, so already, even if it was a non-processed oil, if it's um, a nut and seed oil, there's a higher amount of these polyunsaturated fatty acids. So it would still be a good idea to take more antioxidants like vitamin E, other things like that to keep them stable in the body. But when you add this processing to them on top of them, they're just really highly inflammatory mm -hmm. fats. So not so good for yeah, us. Yeah, and kind of going back to that canola oil example, what happens is not only is it majority of the time, 90% of the time genetically modified, they made this canola plant in order to make canola oil because the rapeseed plant um, didn't make uh, the proper type of oil that could be edible. So this oil now goes into a factory or a chemical plant and it does have, you know, you don't be fooled. You may see things online or in literature that says high in omega-3 fatty acids. The reality is canola oil does have some omega-3 fatty acids, but it now goes through a factory. It goes through heating, refining, um, degumming, bleaching sometimes, and all that heat makes the oil very unstable yeah. and most of the time rancid. Mm -hmm. So now you're gonna get an odor from the omega-3s turning rancid. So then they introduce uh, deodorizing in order to eliminate that odor. And then that because of that process, what omega-3s are in there actually get transformed into trans fatty acids that can harm our arteries. They're and carcinogenic too. Definitely, um, just, you know, contributes to metabolic disease and a whole slew of other things. So as you can see, it's a whole domino effect and that's all before it even gets to your pantry. And then now, I mean, we're definitely using it a lot of the times to heat or bake or whatnot. Yeah. So it's just so many layers of it going through processing, refining, chemicals, um, and it's not a natural oil. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's different from an olive oil that was taken from an orchard and cold pressed with no heat extracting the oils. Um, that's a whole different story. So that's where the difference lies. And you know. Uh, it's confusing because a lot of times the names look very healthy. Yeah, vegetable oil sounds completely mm -hmm. healthy and pretty much everything that's labeled as a vegetable oil is really bad for us. So there is actually a thing called vegetable oil and you might see it on um, grocery shelves, um, but you know, there's sunflower oil, safflower oil, rice bran oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, peanut oil, mm -hmm. and these really are, soybean ones. oil mm -hmm. is another one. So that's probably um, the top ones to look for. And A, don't buy these oils directly off of the shelf in order for, to use for cooking, but keep in mind you should start really being careful about or mindful of looking at the ingredients list when yeah. you are buying anything that's packaged, even a health food, and look at Often what oils. Often in health foods too, mm -hmm. you know, salad dressings. We were just talking about this, you know, things that are labeled as organic, mm -hmm. but they can still have cheap vegetable oils Definitely. in there. So, you know, there's a, I don't want to throw any um, stores under the bus, but there's a large chain um, health food store that many of us frequent and you know that I love. And I've had to be really careful about looking at the ingredients list when I even go to get stuff from their deli. Um, definitely, uh, you know, snacks mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, salad oils, salad dressings, um, and then, you know, some other more economical health food stores. You know, I was just buying sardines and I went to go reach for one um, and I looked at the ingredients list and soybean oil was listed on the ingredients list. And I want to say I probably looked because it's a little cheaper and I thought, well, I normally get this one, but why is this one cheaper? Let me just see. Yep. And it said soybean oil. Um, and that would, that kind of, you know, sardines are so great for omega-3 fatty acids and um, kind of shifting infl inflammation. But, but now it's in a pro-inflammatory yeah, oil. Yeah, now it's bathing in an inflammatory <laughs> industrialized oil that probably was used for like, you know, paint thinner or something. I mean, I don't know. But so you do have to be very mindful. And, um, you know, those oils that we just listed um, can sneak in. 
Yeah, and you know, we were talking about this earlier just in terms of the balance of things, right? Like every once in a while, we're gonna have something with canola oil or some kind of vegetable oil in it. And it's not gonna take us out to have it here and there. But just in terms of what our daily routine is when we're shopping at the market on a regular basis, to just really look at labels if we're gonna be buying packaged foods to just see what kinds of oils are in there and to make a better choice. Now that we do have many companies that are more thoughtful about the oils that they're using, there's generally a better choice. You don't have mm -hmm. to get the cheap processed oil. Um, usually it's gonna be a lower price point and usually you know, those oils are really commonly chosen because they don't have a strong taste. So it's really easy to just you know, mask it in there for body or texture or something like that without a taste. But we just wanna be thoughtful about the impact on our health when we're choosing foods. Yeah, and you know, there's gonna be some of you out there who's like, who are gonna say like it's just really difficult to bake or mm -hmm. make dressings or things, you know, that because these other oils that we're about to mention, you know, have more flavors or, um, and it's true, yeah. you know, like there's no sugar coating it. There, that's the reality. And sometimes there's a, you know, there's a reason why we live in a world full of chemicals and plastics and industrialized oils because they have made our lives easier. Convenient, pleasant, you know, mm -hmm. all these things, but there's a consequence. There is always a consequence. And, you know, you're not going to eat one Greek cookie that has canola <laughs> oil in it and keel over, you know, in grandma's kitchen. But if you eat, canola oil cookies every day, you know, it's going to slowly build up until your body gets to a tipping point. That's the whole point of this medicine is that, and that's the challenge too, because you're not going to notice it from doing one thing one time, you know, just the way that you're not going to lose weight from exercising one time or having one healthy meal, <laughs> and you're not going to die from having one unhealthy meal. Mm -hmm. It's all a cumulative effect. So, and the multiple offenders from all mm -hmm. these different areas. Yeah, exactly. Um, so so let's get into the oils and good fats that you can eat and cook with. Yeah. Um, what are some of the ones that you enjoy? So avocado oil, um, olive oil, I do like, you know, growing up Greek, we had a lot of extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, coconut oil is obviously a huge one. Yeah. Um, me growing up Korean, um, we didn't use as much olive oil. And so Korean food tends to have a little bit more of those industrialized oils. So I've had to switch over my mom and, mm -hmm. you know, obviously even um, kind of reprogrammed from what I grew up with. Um, but so mm, coconut butter oils. Butter and ghee. Ghee is another great one. Um, organic pasture-raised grass-fed butter. Mm -hmm. um, what else have we got? Are we missing anything? Macadamia. Yep, so macadamia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Macadamia nut oil. So just to recap, coconut oil, olive oil, um, you want cold pressed, yeah. organic. You don't want, it's the heat when you, re when you introduce the heat is when things start to go awry. And so that, you know, we have to be thinking about with cooking as well, you know, which things are okay in high temperature, mm -hmm. which things are not, so. And those two are really good. Avocado and coconut have a high heat point. Olive um, oil does not, so yeah. careful with that. I cooked with olive oil for years, not realizing that until I got a little bit more educated. So I use my olive oil for um, topping food and dressings and things like that, Soups. but not mm -hmm. for actually cooking. So we've got avocado, coconut, ghee, organic grass-fed butter, macadamia nut oil. Um, did I miss one? No, I think no, that's what we, yeah, we'll put these all in the description box yeah. for you guys as well. Um, but yeah, so the kind of general recap is be careful with tons of polyunsaturated fatty acids, especially things that are very highly processed, and you know, choosing oils that are less processed and things that have more stable fat composition as you're choosing the fats and oils that you're putting into your body. Yeah. So hope you found this helpful. Um, it's just all information. Don't forget that knowledge is power. So we are here to educate ourselves, educate each other, um, just so we can gather more knowledge and then we can get more refined and um, have more awareness about our health journeys. And that's the whole point of all of this. So um, sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming, um, but we just take one bit at a time and do our best and improve where we can. And that's the whole point. So, and that's the whole point of our health journeys. So hope you found this helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so you know uh, when we upload, you'll be notified. And Dr. Angela and I are so grateful and we'll see you back here very soon. See you back here next week, everyone. Thank you.